And next we have Mythian Chronicles of Ethan, book number one, written by John L. Monk. This is a uh, Mount No Press novel. It is 239 pages. It is $3.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Retirement means immortality. Immortality means adventure. Life begins at 70. Running on the world's fastest quantum computer is a very special game, one where retirees leave their flesh and blood lives to search for an endless adventure. Weapons, spells, gold, experience points. These are all the marks by which life is now measured. Ethan Crane wants none of it. In fact, he never wanted to retire at all, let alone play a game for all eternity. But now he's on a mission to find his wife. A wife he just discovered is still alive and inside the game. Nothing will stop him from reaching her, not even himself. Okay. Um, uh, full disclosure, I received Vance's copy of this novel. Um, I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, this is a digital afterlife story. Um, and I don't... I feel like there is plenty of talk about the digital afterlife portion of the story, but there's not a lot of payoff. And I think there are other better digital afterlife or like retirees dealing with issues with their virtuality. Um, I won't name them, but this is kind of an okay version of that. Um, in the story, an older main character who doesn't really feel that old in the text. Um, he is seeking his deceased wife, whom he kind of discovers after her death, copied herself into a fantasy RPG story. Uh, into a fantasy RPG like world uploaded rain before she died. Um, and in this particular world, there are various RPG aspects, including levels or wards of the game um, where the stakes increase to the higher of, of a ward you travel to. And to get to each new one, you have to beat a particular guardian and each ward is harder with fewer rooms for error. In ward one, you get infinite lives. In ward two, you get a thousand lives. In ward three, you get a hundred lives. In ward four, you get 10 lives. And if you beat all the wards and all the bosses, apparently you get turned into, you get returned to the real world into an immortal robotic um, frame with like in, indistinguishable like characteristics from a real human. Apparently you just, you're your mortality. You get to the whatever it's called, the where mind and machines work together, whatever it is. But that, that that's the goal of this particular like world for rich people. Um, the, the, the setup of the story is a little wonky, but the main character is in the game world um, by about the 10% mark. So there, there is this kind of a longer transition section into that game world, but once you're there, he's, he's there for the entire story. And from there, the main character's goal is to reach level 25, where he'll get like apparently guided a guide to his wife, who is for some reason in a sleeping beauty situation where she's not actually a, awake. And so she's just supposed to be waiting there for him, uh, in the second ward. And he has to get to level 25 for some arbitrary reason. And I'll get into the, why that doesn't me, but, um, personally, I kind of dislike the opening in the story. It has like heavy um, cyberpunk undertones, which is an issue for me personally. And if you don't have issues with cyberpunk stories um, or like how they try to mix them into like Lit RPG and it never really kind of works, um, you're probably like there's meta than I would. But for me, those cyberpunk undertones um, eventually ruin the story for me. Um, the beginning, I kind of had issues with it because once they were introduced with the and again, this is kind of a weird opening, and it, I don't—I don't, I don't think I'm swelling too much. But the main character is seventy; his wife dies under mysterious circumstances, um, and there's this long explanation about how people who are older are given the option to upload their minds to these video game worlds, right? Which is perfectly cool. I'm okay with that. Uh, but he gets a mysterious message saying that, oh, even though you don't think your wife was interested in this, isn't this I, as her biggest fan, uh, uploaded her into the game world. Uh, of the story here. And because she's unregistered, I had to hire, hide her in the second ward and put her into like this coma in the game. And you can come save her if you get there and give her a kiss. Uh, and that's, that's, that's really is the setup of the story. That's the premise in which the main character is decides to upload his mind uh, into this game world permanently. So I'm like, well, okay, that's that's a start. That doesn't seem like it makes sense to me, but it it it's a way to get him in the world. So that is what it is. But there there very much is like the cyberpunk undertone to that beginning. And to me, what that says is once once that was set up, I'm like, oh okay, there's gonna be a lot of lies here in that setup and deceptions. And it means that I understand why they're there. 
because of the cyberpunk kind of like nature of that of those of those undertones um that it's meant to be like oh there are going to be these surprise twists in the story that shows like the what the main character was told really isn't the truth and reality isn't as, as it's supposed to be and they're meant to like subvert um the game world which which normally in a cyberpunk story is perfectly fine um but when you try to mix that into a, a little bit story there are usually issues where it conflicts with the RPG world that I'm expecting to enjoy. Um, and, and in general, my experience has been when those cyberpunk themes are there, that they make the RPG aspects um, less important, if not irrelevant. And so that was my thinking as soon as I realized, oh, that's that's what that setup's going to do. And, and, and to some degree, I was kind of right by the end of the story. Um, there are things that kind of show, oh yeah, that kind of is there. Um, NPCs are self-aware and they hate their roles and often have powers to alter the game in small ways, like making things appear, um, or having special powers that you don't normally think they would or being self-aware, like fully sentient beings. Um, some of them anyways, not all of them. There are also several social me mechanics in the story that are introduced, but are completely relevant and they don't really matter to the story. Um, it kind of feels like the author was playing with them a little bit and kind of just abandoned that particular concept. Um, but there are also game mechanics that are based completely on what the individual player believes. And and I'm like, that that is a little, just a tiny bit annoying just because that means there's not consistent game mechanics um, for every single character, which makes me think that if that's not consistent, are other things not consistent? So should I really care about them if they don't really matter? Um, but worst of all is kind of the ending and it's the ending that kind of re up until like that point, literally up until like the last 10% of the story, I was kind of on the fence of like, okay, this is probably about 7.1, 7.2. There are issues, but for the most part of the, the dungeon stuff, the dungeon stuff was pretty decent. So I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe this is, this is still kind of entertaining, but the end of the story, it ends in a cliffhanger. Um, it, it literally kills an interesting quest line what it and what feels like right before it's going to be resolved um and it, it literally for me at least make, made the leveling stuff that came before it feel like it really didn't matter i mean except as as, as kind of an arbitrary uh progression point of like oh now that you're level now that you're this this level you need um we're just going to suddenly move on into something else entirely and abandon everything that you've done before i'm like oh that's it's like oh it was it was it was quite frustrating for me um and once i looked at the story as a whole i realized oh as far as like the plot goes um of, of him like trying to get to war two and get to his wife um <laughs> you can kind of just skip from when the main character enters the world at the 10 percent mark and go all the way to like the 95 percent mark and the plot line would advance the same, like all the stuff in the middle, even though it's not poorly written, even though it's like a pretty decent dungeon knife stuff. Um, as far as like the plot goes, it didn't really have an impact. Again, except as like this kind of arbitrary marker of saying, oh, he has to get to level 25 for an arbitrary reason um, to advance to this next place where a wife might or might not be. You know, and so that that for me was probably the point where it, it, the, the story was kind of ruined for me. And again, that that's absolutely just me. Um, if and again, that that kind of ties back into the cyberpunk influence, which just you know doesn't work for me in general. I, I, I've never really found it to be um, compatible with the lit RPG concepts or lit RPG novels and genres, because again, cyberpunk is is intentionally written as um, a way of subverting like the game systems in in in, in general, right, or the, or the cyber world um, and literally stuff to me when it's when it's really done well i feel like the game world is really solid and the game mechanics matter to the story and so those two con ideas and those two kind of storytelling are inherently have a conflict in my brain um at least as far as i've, I've seen it i think i might have seen it done but uh, well once uh in all the like 900 stories um that i've uh, love stories that i've read and reviewed um, again, not everything is bad in the story. I don't think there is. Again, there's de decent dungeon diving for like a good middle portion of the section of the story. And, and there are RPG mechanics here. It is an art little bit of story. There's leveling, there's character sheets, stats, classes, skill points, XP and quest. Um, and again, I, I was really getting into like the last quest line. I thought, oh, this is, this feels a little bit different at least. This is kind of a, a, a twist or this is going to be something interesting. And, and again, except that it gets cut off and it's like absolutely ruined. Um for for what it is and again this might be something that's continued on in the next book but i'm like i i'm not sure i want to read it because this one kind of ruined the story for me um and overall again 
there were some good points. A lot of good XP grinding in the middle of the story, reasonably good action descriptions, good party builds, variety of monsters to fight. Um, but again, the end of the novel kind of ruined everybody. So that, that's how I feel about it. Uh, so the story gets a score of six out of 10. It doesn't work for me. It might work for you if you don't have the issues of the kind of concept that if you don't mind cyberpunk stuff or you love cyberpunk and you're a huge fan of it and you like how it mixes with liturgy and what you've read, you might like this more than I would please feel free to go, go give it a chance. It's on Kindle Unlimited. You can go, go check it out and see if it works for you or not. Uh, but for me, by the end of the story, just really didn't. Um, it's again, Miffian Chronicles of Ethan book number one um, with the score of six out of 10.